Tune in to the leading internet radio station in the mother city, Radio Easter River. For more information, log on to our website, which is www.radioesterriver.co.za. Want to take your business to the next level? Advertise with Radio Easter River by emailing us at admin at radioeasterriver.co.za.
God bless you and welcome back to this morning's podcast of the Messages of the Hour with me, Evangelist Almar, addressing you here from the studios of Radio East of Ever. And we're just grateful for the Lord once again for giving us this opportunity that we can just gather in His name and just sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to what He has to say to us in His Word. Beautiful song we just listened to by Jimmy Swaggart speaking about when King Jesus comes to live with us again. There will be no more wars, there will be no more fights in the ghettos, but there will be peace on earth at last. And that is the expectation that the church is looking to, that the Christian believer is uh, really expecting, is that Jesus will come again. And that is our hope. It is called in the Bible, the blessed hope, when our Lord Jesus Christ will return again. So may the Lord bless you, and may he be with you. Now we want to read this morning from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter number 15, and the Bible says the following words. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, But why do you also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curse the father and mother, let him die the death. But you say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. <clears throat> and honor not his father or his mother, ye shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people drove nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Now we want to touch a vital subject in the Bible this morning. We want to speak about the tradition of men. And may the Lord just guide us through that. And may you as the listeners also just have patience. And just tune in with your Bible so that you can have the right orientation and the right understanding in the context in which we are speaking this morning. So this is the gospel according to Matthew. Now the Bible has four gospels or gospel writers. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Now it is one gospel described by four different men from four different viewpoints. But all four of these men were actually eye and ear witnesses. They were people that saw and that heard these things. And they were the ones that could narrate to us and give us the correct understanding of what actually had transpired. So <clears throat> we can look at these gospel writers as evangelists. And that is in fact what they are called, evangelists. So they are the bringers of the good news. They are the broadcasters. Yes, that is also another word for an evangelist. It's somebody that broadcasts the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here we see Matthew reporting something that happened during the time that Jesus was walking the earth. So Matthew was also called by Jesus himself. If you go into Matthew chapter 9, you will see that the Bible speaks about him as being a tax collector. But then we see that Jesus came along and Jesus said that he must follow him. So Jesus took this man, changed his life and gave him a born again experience. And Jesus made him an eye and ear witness, yes, of the things of what he saw and what he heard. And it is through this man called Matthew that we now have a reliable account of the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Matthew records in this 15th chapter, he speaks about the religious leaders coming from Jerusalem and challenging Jesus. And this was the life and ministry of Jesus, that he was always being challenged, yes, always being tested, always being tried, always being tempted. And the religious leaders were tempting Jesus and were asking him these questions, why do they, why does he transgress, or the people, his disciples, why do they transgress the tradition of the elders? So if we look at the context of the chapter, we see here a group of Jewish people that were holding on to the Torah or the scripture, and they had also on top of the Torah or the scriptures, they had their own traditions. Yes, traditions that they had made themselves. And they held to tradition on the same platform as the scripture. And this became a problem in the sight of God. And Jesus actually rebuked these Jewish people for that. 
Now, tradition is something that is good, people, but they can also be bad traditions. Now, tradition can be summarized as the beliefs, the values, and the practices that is passed on from one generation to another. So, there are good traditions and there are bad traditions. There are things that are passed on from generation to generation that are beneficial to mankind, but then there are also things that are harmful to mankind. And there are also things that are not pleasing to God. Now, the issue came up here that uh, the disciples were eating the bread, but they did not wash their hands before eating the bread. Now, this might seem as something good. This might seem as something normal. Wash your hands. You might have touched a dirty surface. You might have touched some contaminated substance. And now you're eating and you're placing your hands into your mouth and those germs go into your body and you get sick. Even modern science would argue today that nothing is wrong with washing your hands. But Jesus gave us a different perspective. And Jesus said, That it is not the things that enter into man that make him unclean, but it is the things that go from the inside out that makes him unclean. And if you study further into the chapter, you will see that our Lord Jesus Christ even gave examples of the things that come out of a man's heart and that comes out that makes him unclean. And he was saying, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Now Jesus was speaking from a spiritual point of view. So Jesus was not giving a science lesson here. Jesus was not giving a hygiene lesson. But Jesus was speaking to the part of mankind which is more valuable. And that is the spirit. Hallelujah. The soul on the inside of man. That is more valuable. And there are things that can defile the soul of a man. Now the flesh is temporary. The body is temporary. And this body goes through many things in life. From our birth to our death, we are destined to go through many things. We often battle illnesses in this world. We often face difficulties and challenges. So whatever comes through the, to the flesh or happens to the flesh is temporary. Even death in itself is temporary because God promised that there will come a resurrection. But when it comes to the soul of man, that is something that is eternal. Yes, the soul is what will live on even after we pass on. And it is the soul that is more valuable than the flesh. And many times people invest more in the flesh than in the soul. Now there's nothing wrong in taking care of your flesh. The Bible even teaches us that in the book of Ephesians, that no man hateth his own flesh, but you will cherish your flesh. So there's nothing wrong with taking a bath. There's nothing wrong with dressing good. There's nothing wrong by brushing your teeth. There's nothing wrong by taking care of your hair. There's nothing wrong with taking care of your flesh. But sometimes we over-invest in the flesh and we neglect the spirit or the soul. We forget also to dress the inward man. Now, as I sit here, I have a nice tie, I have a nice jacket on, and that is good. It makes me look presentable. Nothing wrong with that. But the inside man also needs to be clothed. And Paul was writing in Colossians chapter 3 that we should clothe ourselves with Christ Jesus. And who is Christ Jesus? He is the Word. So the inside man should be clothed with the word of God. But the core of the matter is, Jesus was referring to the things that defile the soul of a man. Yes, but we see that these religious leaders, they were not spiritually minded and they were looking at the flesh. And to them it seemed like the disciples were transgressing the tradition of the fathers, of the man, of the people, of the family. By not washing your hands first and then eating. So we see that they were taking the traditions of man and placing it on a higher level than the word of God. And they took offense when the tradition of man was being broken instead of the word of God being broken. (coughs) But we see that Jesus gave them a counter question. And Jesus told them the following words or asked them, "Why why do you break the commandment of God? Yes, Jesus was saying that they were making the word of God by none effect through their tradition. 
Yes, they were transgressing the commandment of God by their tradition. Now, this was 2,000 years ago approximately, and Jesus was speaking to people staying back there. But what Jesus said back there can also be applied to us living in this day and in this age. Yes, the word of God is forever valid. The Bible is not old-fashioned. The Bible is not outdated, but the Bible is still relevant even in this day and this age in which we are living in. And we see that the religious people back then, they were people that said they believed in the one God. They were the people that claimed to believe in the scripture. But yet it was the same people that were adding to the word of God their own traditions. And they were placing their traditions on a higher level than the word of God. And thereby making the word of God of no effect. And they were actually transgressing or they were breaking the commandment or the word of God. And people... Uh, in, during that day were actually had, had more respect for the traditions than the word of God. And if we pull it over in our day and age, yes, even in this year of 2024, we see the religious world in the same condition. We see that many times people take their inherited religious traditions. Now there are traditions which are good, which are not uh, uh, religious by nature, but uh, they are still beneficial to mankind. There are still things that people are practicing from generation to generation that are beneficial to mankind. But then there are the things that God commanded us to also teach our children and our children's children. And that is the word of God. If you go into the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, you will see that God commanded his people to teach the word of God to their children and to their children's children. So that is what should be passed on from generation to generation. That is the tradition that should be kept. It is the word of God should be taught from generation to generation, from one person to another person. But we see, even as it was back then, that people had their own traditions, which became a substitute for the word of God. And they thereby transgressed the word of God and made it of none effect. We see that they were worshipping God through their traditions. <clears throat> and God called this, this uh, worship in vain worship. And Jesus even said that Isaiah prophesied of you, saying that you have made the word of God of none effect, through your traditions. Hallelujah. And so it is even in our day, it is also in our age, that a religious tradition that is contrary to the word of God has taken over in our churches. And people are worshipping God according to what the tradition says instead of what the word of God says. And if we are worshipping according to, to tradition, we are worshipping in vain. The Bible says in John 4 verse 24 that God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God does not want to be worshipped in any way and God also doesn't want to be worshipped anywhere. But God said in Deuteronomy chapter 12, there where I record my name there is where you must worship me. Hallelujah. And when we come over into the New Testament we see that God placed his name in his son Jesus Christ. Jesus says in John chapter 5, I have come into my Father's name. Hallelujah. So there is where God placed His name. He placed His name in His Son. So the name of the Father is the name of the Son. And there is where you should worship God. You should worship God in Jesus Christ. You should worship God according to Spirit and according to truth. Now what is truth? The Bible says in John 17 verse 17, Sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is is the truth. Hallelujah. So when we are worshiping God in our churches, we should be worshiping him according to the truth. Hallelujah. And such a worship is acceptable to God. But we see back then God rejected the worship. God rejected the sacrifices and that can very well happen. We see in 1 Samuel chapter 15, that Saul, the king of Israel, was commanded to go and to uh, take the Amalekites. Yes, he was supposed to go and attack them, and he was supposed to destroy them. But we see that he transgressed the commandment of God by sparing some of the animals and also Agag, the king. And then he brought the king back as a captive and some of the animals, and he wanted to sacrifice them unto God. 
But we see the prophet Samuel rebuking him and saying that God is more pleased with obedience than sacrifice. Yes. And so it's, we see that there are times where God even rejects sacrifice. Like in the case of Saul, God rejected that sacrifice. We go back to the very beginning to Cain and Abel. We see that both of them brought sacrifices unto God. But God accepted Abel's sacrifice and God rejected Cain's sacrifice. So it is possible that God can reject even sacrifice and God can also reject worship yes and throughout the history of the people of Israel we see there were times where they went backslidden and even during those backslidden times when they still tried to offer unto God sacrifices that God rejected it because God is not pleased if sacrifices are being done despite of his word yes if god's word is being put aside and people are sacrificing in god in that case calls the worship in vain worship now people to bring it much closer to our time sometimes it feels good to speak about history and to point the fingers in some other direction but the bible says in the book of james chapter one it speaks that the The word of God is like a mirror, hallelujah. And we should look into the mirror of the word of God. So we should see ourselves in the picture. And in today's time, if we look at the so-called Christianity, the so-called Christianity in our day and age, we see that it consists also of many inherited traditions, inherited religious traditions. And people have embraced these traditions from generation to generations. And these traditions many times are contrary to the word of God. Now we're not saying all of Christianity, but there are traditions in Christianity that is not compatible with the word of God at all. If we look for instance to start with, there is a (coughs) tradition within the Christian world that people say that Jesus Christ, our Lord, was born on the 25th of December. And if we go back to the scripture, we find no scripture for such. There's no scripture that pinpoints and says that Jesus was born during this time. It is an inherited tradition that is contrary to the word of God. And if we look into the Bible, we are also not commanded to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Not at all. We see that when Jesus was born, there was rejoicing. Even the angels was rejoicing. Even the shepherds were rejoicing. Yes, there was rejoicing. But we are not commanded to celebrate the birth of Jesus. But we are commanded to celebrate the death. The death of Jesus on the cross. Because that is the victory over sin. And that is what Jesus accomplished to give us everlasting life. And we celebrate the death of Jesus Christ by partaking of the Lord's Supper. Yes. And by attending the Holy Communion. Yes. That is how we are celebrating what he did for us. The victory and the triumph that he accomplished on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. And we are forever grateful for what he did for us. But many times people are still clinging to these traditions that is not found in the scripture. And they are worshipping according to these traditions. And God is rejecting such uh, worship. Yes, people come together many times in the time of December to celebrate the birth of the Savior. And God looks down from heaven and God does not recognize 25 December to be the birth of Jesus and never did God command us even to do a celebration about it. We see that there's also an inherited tradition that people call Mary the mother of God and they also call Mary the Immaculate Virgin. And this is a tradition that is passed on from generation to generation that people believe. But you see that God does not have a mother. We see that God is spirit, God is eternal, and God manifested himself in Jesus Christ. But God does not have a father or a mother. And this is also a wrong tradition. And people are being taught that Mary is still an immaculate virgin. But we see that after she gave birth to Jesus, now when she conceived Jesus in the womb, she was a virgin. But after she gave birth to Jesus, her husband Joseph knew her. And we see that Jesus or Mary had four more children. We see that there was four brothers and there was actually two more sisters. So she had more children after Jesus. And if she had more children after Jesus, she could no longer be a virgin. So it is a wrong tradition to call Mary still a virgin. 
And many times people are being taught from generation to generation to pray unto Mary. And this is idolatry, which God himself prohibited in the Bible, that we shall not have any God beside him. We shall not worship anyone else beside him. And if people are worshiping this way by uh, saying prayers to Mary, that such worship is in vain worship, God rejects it. God rejects that worship. God rejects that sacrifice. Many times people are being taught that their religious leader is the head of the church. And this is being done from generation to generation. People are being taught that the Pope or a bishop or a cardinal or a pastor or whoever is the head of the church. But this is not the case. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 that Jesus Christ himself is the head of the church. So people, if you are worshiping this way, by tradition, what you were being taught by religious tradition, but is contrary to the word of God, then your worship that you are worshiping is in vain. If you are teaching for doctrine the commandments of men, then your your worship is in vain and God rejects it. God wants to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And the truth is the word. God wants to be worshipped according to his word. Hallelujah. We see there are many other traditions In our day and age that uh, people are being taught. We see for instance that little babies shortly after they are born are being brought and they are being sprinkled with water. And by this they become a member of the church. But this is also a tradition of man that is not founded in the Holy Scripture. Nowhere in the Bible was babies sprinkled with water. But everyone that was baptized in water in the Bible, they were baptized where there was many water. And the word baptism, if you go into the Greek language, baptizo, we see that that actually means to be immersed, to go down and to come up again. And that is how Jesus was baptized in the book of Matthew chapter 3. We see see he was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist. And the Bible says that Jesus went down into the water and then he came up again. We see also in John chapter 3 that John the Baptist was baptizing where there was many waters. So the correct form of baptism is not by sprinkling. It is actually by immersion, by going down and coming up again. Even the teaching of baptism, the symbolism and the meaning behind it, it is being compared to a funeral ceremony. If you read Romans chapter 6 and Colossians chapter 2, the Bible says we are buried with him in baptism yes we are buried with him in the baptism and we are raised out of the water to walk in a new life with christ so baptism is being compared to a funeral ceremony and we know that funerals are normally done in this way that the body is placed down and the resurrection means to bring it back up again and that is how you should be baptized in water now we're going to take a break quickly we're going to listen to that song king jesus after that we return to this morning's broadcast of the message of the hour god bless you
Internet radio station in the mother city, Radio Easter River. For more information, log on to our website, which is www.radioesterriver.co.za. God bless you and welcome back to this morning's broadcast of the message of the hour. So we're speaking this morning about the tradition of men. And we found our foundational scripture in Matthew chapter 15, where we see that Jesus actually rebuked the religious leaders when they came to challenge him about why his disciples were not keeping the tradition of the the people. And then Jesus was asking them, why are they breaking the commandment of God by their tradition? And Jesus was addressing a particular crowd of people here, and they were very religious. They were staunch to the letter. They believed every word. And here we see, <coughs> in our day and age, the same situation. We find ourselves in the same situation where people are upholding their traditions and lifting it to a higher level than the word of God. And people are worshipping, worshipping according to their tradition. And God calls it vain worship. They are worshipping me in vain. And today in The so-called Christianity, there are also many traditions that are not compatible with the Bible, that are not compatible with the Word of God. But these traditions were brought in by church fathers. They were brought in by uh, leaders within Christianity. But these traditions cannot be brought into reconciliation with the Bible. And if we are worshipping according to traditions, then we are worshipping in vain. Now we just touch on the subject of baptism for instance and we see that nowhere in the Bible was any baby baptized by sprinkling of water. In fact the Bible doesn't know any sprinkling. The Bible only knows baptism by immersion. That we should be baptized where there are many waters. And that is how John the Baptist actually practiced baptism and we know that he was a man sent from God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. And we know that John was sent to baptize and he was preaching repentance. Yes, and that is a prerequisite. Before we can be baptized, we must first repent. Yes, and before we can repent, we must first hear the gospel. Hallelujah. And that is the pattern. That is the the biblical pattern. First the gospel gets preached, then people believe it, and then people 
obey it. Hallelujah. Jesus says in Mark 16, verse 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. So first we must believe the gospel. And then we must obey the gospel. And we obey the gospel by repenting. The Bible says in Acts 2 verse 38, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the biblical pattern, yes, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is how the early church baptized. They baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You can go into the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 16 and you will see that the people in Samaria they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus you can go to Acts chapter 10 and you will see that Peter commanded even uh, Cornelius which was an Italian to be baptized in the name of the Lord if you go to uh, the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 5 and 6 you will see that Paul rebaptized the people in Ephesus in the name of the Lord Jesus as well. And that is how the early church baptized according to the Bible. Now this might come as a shock and a surprise to many people, but there is not a single scripture in the Bible that shows that people were baptized by using the titles Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And many people say, but it's written in the Bible. Now if we go to Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, Jesus said, baptize them in the name of of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, Father is not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Spirit is not a name. But what Jesus said in Matthew 28, he said, baptize them in the name. And then Peter, on the day of Pentecost, under the direct inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he said, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And that is the name, people. In Matthew 28, Jesus gave the commandment, and then we see in Acts chapter 2 that the commandment was being obeyed. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that they were baptized, and that in one day, 3,000 souls accepted the Lord, and those 3,000 people were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ is according to the Word of God. To be baptized in any other way is according to tradition. Now, as we mentioned, nowhere in the Bible you will find a scripture that says, and they were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's no such a scripture at all. But every scripture in the New Testament, after the day of Pentecost, it records people being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Even in Galatians chapter 3, the Bible even speaks that you were baptized in Christ Jesus. Yes, so you're baptized in his name and you're baptized into him. So that is another inherited tradition. Yes. Now, as you are listening to me this morning, many of the things I say might be an eye-opener for you, but I ask you to not take any offense, but to just study the Bible yourself and just read and see if these things are so. This is not my personal opinion. This is just the Bible. I'm just relaying to you what the Bible has to say. And many times through tradition, people have been taught in Christianity that God is three separate persons in one God. And this is the greatest stumbling block that there is to the other major religions. If you look at the religion of Judaism, they believe there's only one God. If you look at the religion of Islam, they believe there's only one God. But if you come into Christianity, you find a teaching that God is three persons in one. And this is a great stumbling block, not just for the Jew, but also for the Muslim. Because they know fundamentally, according to the Bible, there is only one God. And to worship more than one God is idolatry. Yes, it is seen as a serious, serious transgression. It is seen as shirk, as to place God on the same level as, uh, or somebody else on the same level as God. So there is not three individual persons, but it is one God. Yes, only one. And this one God manifests himself in different ways. Yes, if we look in the Old Testament, we see throughout all the passages, there is only one God. And this one God manifested himself as the pillar of fire by night, as the cloud by day, the pillar of cloud. Sometimes he appears as a flame in a burning bush. Sometimes he appears as the angel of the covenant. Sometimes he appears in different ways. But in the New Testament, he appeared in the body of flesh in Jesus Christ. And in John chapter 1, the Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. And then it says in verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the truth of the matter is there is one God that manifests himself in different ways. 
In the Old Testament, He's God above us. In the New Testament, He becomes God with us in Jesus Christ. And now He is God in us through the Holy Spirit. So we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are different manifestations of the one God. It doesn't mean there is three gods. We don't worship three gods. We worship one God. And it is important that we have the right orientation in the Bible. Because the Bible repeatedly says there is only one God. So if we are worshiping according to traditions, then it is time that we come back to the Word of God. And many times people are being led astray because of traditions. There are people that have been taught a tradition that after somebody dies, you can still pray for that person to come out of hell, but that is not according to the Bible, people. If somebody's time on earth is over, his time is over, and God is the judge of that person. But we don't have power to pray people out of heaven or out of hell. God is the judge, and he decides who goes where after they die. But there is nothing like you can pray somebody out of hell. There is a teaching that was taught in the Middle Ages that was called purgatory. And people had to come and pay money to the priest so that the priest could do special prayers for their family member that passed on so that that person can be delivered out of the purgatory, which was like a mini hell or a preliminary hell that they would first go into before they could either go to heaven or hell. And even that teaching is not found in the Bible at all. And during the Middle Ages, many Protestant people, they stood up against the church and they started to protest because these things, these practices, these values, these teachings, they were the commandments of men just to exploit the people from their money. So there is nothing like that, people. You can only pray for a person now while they are still here with us. After death, it is already decided. Even after death, you are either you you are you are already saved right now, or you are already lost right now. There's not something like you'll be saved after you die. No, you are saved now while you believe in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John chapter three that he that believes in him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. Of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's either you believe now or you don't believe now. There's not an in-between. And what you believe now and what you are here now is what you will also be in the afterlife. If you are a believer now, you'll be a believer in the afterlife. If you are an unbeliever now, you'll be an unbeliever after you die as well. So we should really examine what we believe in the light of the scripture. There are many other things that we can go into and we will see that the so-called Christian world today, majority of it is not exactly as the Bible teaches. Now we're not here to condemn anybody or to badmouth anybody, but we're just here to invite all listeners to just do their own Bible study, to do their own research. We are living in a scientific age. We are living in a knowledge age. We have access to information at the tap of a button. Yes, At the snap of your finger, you can research yourself. You can read, you can study, and you can see for yourself whether these things are so. Now, many times God needs to use somebody to speak to you, to bring you to a certain point. After that, it is between you and God. Hallelujah. So you need to examine. So when it comes to tradition, people, we should evaluate our traditions in the light of the Bible and see whether it lines up with the Bible. Now, many times you get people that dress awkward. You get somebody that maybe has on a black pants, but maybe has a purple shirt, and it might seem it's not a match. But what we should really have to match is what we believe should match with the Bible. You have somebody maybe that has on a blue shirt and a blue pants, and it looks like that matches because it's the same color. But what we should really be matching is the Word of God. Yes, we should match our lives with the word of God. We should match our beliefs with the word of God. We should match our experience with the word of God. And if we match it with the word of God and we bring it in line with the word of God, certainly God will be pleased with us because God calls us unto obedience to his word. Not to the word of a man, not to the word of a church, but to obedience to the word of God. Now there is a tradition that Christians ought to keep. And the Bible says this, it speaks in the book of Second Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter number 3. The Apostle Paul was speaking 
and he was writing. He says, If any any man obey not our word by this epistle, no dead man and have no company with him, that he may be a saint. Hallelujah. So we see that there was a tradition that was being passed on. And that tradition was what the apostles had commanded the people. If you go to 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 6, he says, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walk of disorderly and not after the tradition he received from us. So if we are walking according to the tradition that the apostles left for us, then we are walking orderly. But if we were walking outside of the tradition of the apostles, then we are walking disorderly. Now the tradition of the apostles is not their own make believe system but it is actually the commandments of Jesus Christ that they received and they pass it on to the body of believers if you go to Acts chapter 1 the Bible says that Jesus gave instructions to the apostles through the Holy Spirit hallelujah and if you go to Acts chapter 2 the Bible says and they remain steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in the fellowship and in the breaking of the bread and of the prayers that is the tradition that the Christians should be keeping hallelujah they should be keeping the apostles doctrine they should be keeping the fellowship by coming together regularly to fellowship around the word of God. They should be keeping the breaking of the bread, which is the holy communion, which is the Lord's Supper. Not the Lord's breakfast or the Lord's lunch. There's not something like that in the Bible. There is the Lord's breakfast. No, not the Lord's breakfast, the, the Lord's Supper. That is what we should be keeping. And then also the prayers. That is what the early church had as their tradition. So if you want to be a genuine Christian, that is the tradition that you should be following. The tradition that was passed on by the apostles, hallelujah. The practices, the beliefs, the values that the apostles received from Jesus, they pass on to the body of believers, the Christians. And that is what they should actually be upholding because that is the tradition that is in line with the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. That is... The apostles' doctrine, the fellowship, the breaking of the bread, and of the prayers. Hallelujah. That is what the early church was practicing traditionally. Hallelujah. But we see as church history went on, it became diluted, yes. And we see that people came in and injected their own doctrines, their own traditions. And so they made the word of God of none effect. They made it null and void. And that is what we should watch against. Because once we follow the tradition of man instead of the word of God, we are actually worshipping in vain. We are sacrificing in vain. And God is not pleased with us at all. But this is the tradition that we should follow. Because Jesus sent these apostles and he said, Whosoever receiveth you, That I sent receives me, and he that receives me receives the Father. Hallelujah. But he that rejects you rejects me, and he that rejects me rejects the one that sent me. And even the Apostle John was writing in 1 John chapter 4. He says, those that are out of God, they hear us. But those that are not of God, they hear us not. If you go to 1 John chapter 4, just in closing, he said these words. They are of the world. And therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So if you listen to what the apostle says, you are actually listening to what God said. And why? Because God sent them. Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. He was writing about the woman must be silent in the churches. It's not permitted for them to speak. And he was speaking about this topic. And just at the end of it, he says, If any man be spiritual among you or prophet, then he must acknowledge that what I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Hallelujah. So Paul wasn't writing his own Christianity. He wasn't writing his own Bible. But he was writing unto us the commandments of the Lord. And that is what we should be examining. And many times there are people today that say they are spiritual or they are prophets. But then they are saying things that are contrary to what Paul was writing. Now Paul says in Galatians 1 verse 8. 
Though we, an angel from heaven comes and preaches a gospel different than the one that we already preached, let him be a curse. So it is quite serious, people, if we preach something different or teach something different or even write something different than that which Paul and the other apostles had already preached. We automatically get placed under a curse because we preach another Jesus, another gospel, and we find ourselves in the wrath of God. So people, that is quite a mouthful to share with you this morning about the tradition of man. This topic can continue and continue because there's volumes of books written of it. There's historical records. There is biblical literature. And if anyone is interested in receiving such literature, you can contact me on 078-721-9991. 078-721-9991. If there's anyone that would like to know more about the message of the hour, that wants to learn more about the Bible, hallelujah, you can contact me. If anyone is in need of prayer this morning, you can close your eyes and bow your head right there where you are right now. And let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for granting me another opportunity here on the radio Easter River that I can just share the people, share with the people your word. And I pray that you will bless them and that you will be with them and that you will guide them and give them insight and understanding. Make them to understand, Lord, that I'm not against them, but I'm for them. And I'm just a fellow human being, their fellow citizen that is sharing with them the truth of the word. May you just now heal every sick person. Those going through challenges, difficulties, Lord, with finances, in their marriages, whatever the problem may be, you are greater than all of that. And I just pray that you will intercept and intervene, Lord, and just make all things new. Bless each and every person that was tuned in this morning and be with us even in this day and do far above that which we can ask or pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now, beloved, please continue to spread the word out there about our local radio station, Radio Easter River. You can catch us live on Facebook on the Radio Easter River page. You can join our TikTok live on the Radio Easter River TikTok profile. Check out our website, www.radioeasterriver.co.za, or just download the app on the Play Store. As we go off the air, we listen to that song, King Jesus. God bless you until the next time. In Jesus' holy name, amen.